Hello, hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a bit different than usual because it's actually the second half of a piece that I already started. Specifically, today I wanted to show you guys the process that went into fully finishing the artwork that I made a start on during my charity stream a few days ago. If any of you didn't know, or if you didn't catch it, that live stream was something that I put together as a charity event to raise funds for the LGBT community charity, the National Black Justice Coalition. That fundraiser is also attached to this video that you're watching right now, and it's going to be up and running until the 20th at the end of this week. So there's still plenty of time left if you want to contribute to a good cause and support some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Alternatively, if you're watching this after the 20th, there are also some links in the description of this video to a bunch of good causes like the NBJC and the Trans Women of Colour Collective that are always worth being shown a bit of love and support. Now, when I started drawing this piece during the stream the other day, I had been hoping to get it fully finished and rendered within the hours that I was live. I had a very clear image in my mind of how I wanted the piece to turn out, and I thought I could get there in two hours. But as I found out, that was actually a pretty overambitious goal to say the least, um, <laughs> and in the end I had to call it a day after finishing just the basic line work and flat colours. But I just couldn't leave it unfinished, so I came back to finish it up the next day on my own time, and that is what you're seeing on screen right now. In the end, all of the extra painting work I needed to do to get this piece completed took about three extra hours on top of what I'd already done during the stream and beforehand. Uh, so yeah, it definitely took a lot longer than I could have managed during the stream. As soon as I opened this piece back up to work on it the next morning, the first thing I wanted to tackle was the hair. Because I was rushing a bit to finish the flat colours before I ran out of time, I only managed to kind of block out a general squiggly shape during the stream rather than going into full detail on each individual braid. And thankfully, a lot of you guys who were present during the stream were in the chat frantically trying to let me know how badly that needed to be corrected. You were all 100% right for calling me out on that by the way, it looked a mess and it just wasn't accurate, and we are all about accurate representation in this house. So yeah, needless to say, that was really bugging me, I was just itching to fix it all night and all morning the next day until I was actually able to open the file up and get back to work. But while I am sorry for having left you guys on a bit of a braid-based cliffhanger at the end of the stream there, I am actually really glad that I ended the stream where I did, because it meant that I could actually take the proper time I needed to the next day to just trawl through the internet really thoroughly to find a bunch of different references, and just give my full focus to doing right by this hairstyle and giving it the amount of proper attention to detail that it deserves without getting distracted. Altogether, the corrections that I needed to make to just her braids alone took an entire extra hour to complete. I also ended up doing the coloured line work effect that I mentioned during the stream to give them a bit more texture and tone variation, and at some point, just for fun, I used the pen tool to add some white dots spattered on top to give them a glittery, pride parade ready kind of look. While detailing her face, I added some pink and blue makeup around her eyes, and thanks to some more excellent suggestions from you guys in the livestream chat, I also decided to give her some little baby hairs just up at her hairline. And on that note, uh, I gotta say, honestly, this piece wouldn't have turned out half as good as it did without all of you guys who were popping up in the chat to kind of steer me in the right direction when it came to a bunch of those finer details. It was a really educational experience for me to be able to scroll back through and read through all of your messages. Uh, I learned a lot from you guys about hair terminology, especially, that I just had no idea about before. And even though I said it a bunch already during the live stream, so I run the risk of sounding like a broken record here, uh, I really sincerely appreciate that so many of you guys were generous enough to kind of take a moment of your time and energy to educate me like that, because you didn't have to. Uh, I know it can get really annoying and tiring to have to do so all the time, uh, but I just hope you know that even though I might miss a few comments during live streams because the chat goes so fast, uh, I am always going to listen if you guys have something to say or something to correct me on, and I'm always going to be really goddamn grateful to be able to listen and hear from you guys in the first place, because being able to learn directly from the people who you want to be able to represent in your artwork is such an invaluable and, like, precious thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful for it, and I hope that over time I can improve because of it. So thank you again. And, you know, call me sentimental again, but I think the fact that this piece was so vastly improved by the fact that so many of you guys pitched in and were kind enough to give me advice as I was working on it, I don't know, it feels like it really adds to the feeling of community that I wanted this piece to represent, so it's nice, it's really cool. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to move swiftly on here so that you guys can be spared from any more of my sentimentality. Uh, <laughs> so the next bit of detail that I had a lot of fun working on here was the boots. I think we all love a good chunky soled shoe in a character design, they're always really fun for adding a bit of flair, and these ones were based on a very cool glittery pair that I found online. 
I kept the image reference I had for them in front of me while I was painting, and used the airbrush to add some patchy gradients before going in with the textured brush to give them that glittery kind of look. Then I added some more solid patches of tone on some new layers, and played around with the layer blend modes until it looked like the kind of oversaturated shimmer that I was aiming for. I've been having a lot of fun with these heavily saturated palettes lately now that I think about it. After finishing the boots, I did the rest of the shading as I normally would with a mix of gradients and cell tone, and kept on colorizing more of the line work as I went along. At first, I mostly tried to just colorize the internal line work on the seams of her clothes and parts like that, but then I decided to color over a couple of patches on the outermost sections like the edge of the flag and the hat, and it looked really good. So by the end of it, most of the ink layer had been turned some shade of pink or blue. <laughs> What I decided to save for last, though, was the section that was either going to be the most fun, the most difficult, or both. The skirt. From the get-go of working on this piece, I'd had the idea of trying to render the skirt to make it look like it was made of holographic fabric. You know, the silvery, rainbowy, colourfully reflective kind? Yeah, I think one of the takeaways that can be made from this artwork is the fact that I really don't set easy challenges for myself. <laughs> In the end though, the method for rendering the skirt ended up being kind of similar to how I did the boots. I applied a gradient, rainbow this time, and set to work erasing sections of it to fill in the blanks with a harder edged area of bright white highlight. On its own however, that wasn't really giving me the fully holographic look that I was aiming for, so after scrolling through another set of reference images, I started drawing some funky abstract reflections onto each pleat of the skirt, and adding new colours spreading outwards from the original blotches. If you've never tried to recreate the colour scheme of a holographic fabric by eyeballing it before, I can tell you right now that it is a cruel and unusual task to set yourself. <laughs> so what I ended up doing to pick the order of the colours that I used to draw these reflective shapes was to use the expert method of squinting at my reference images for a really long time and then deciding, yeah, this is close enough. <laughs> and not for nothing, but uh, I think it worked. I had to mess around a lot with the layer blend modes to reach the right level of saturation and shininess, but for my first attempt at drawing holographic fabric, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I also think it worked out pretty well having a bit more of a colourful section of fabric in the middle of her outfit like this to just break up the composition a little bit. After that, I finished arranging the confetti and added a cool reflective shadow on the ground, and the piece was finally finished. Compared to where I had to leave off with this artwork at the end of the stream, the difference now that it's fully finished is really crazy to see. I think this is honestly some of the best rendering I've ever done, so needless to say I'm really, really happy with how this piece turned out. Now, because I always want you guys to be able to get a print of my original artworks if you really vibe with them, and especially so with my pride designs, I am going to be putting this up for sale on my Redbubble store like I normally would. But because Redbubble unfortunately doesn't have any systems in place to automatically redirect a portion of the profits to charitable causes, which is how I would much rather set this up, uh, what I'm going to do instead is personally keep track of all of the sales that are made of this artwork over the course of the next month after this video goes up, the whole month, and manually donate 100% of those profits to the Trans Women of Colour Collective. I'm also going to be posting this artwork to my usual social media platforms, uh, so if you want to download it for personal use only, obviously don't redistribute it, um, but if you want to use it as a phone background or anything like that, you're more than welcome to. All I would ask is that you please make a donation of any amount to one of the charities listed in the description of this video. So yeah, links for all of that are going to be down below, but for now, thank you very much for tuning into this video. Thank you also once again to all of you who tuned in for the live stream earlier this week. And one more massive thank you to all of you for getting together with me here and helping to raise so much for a really worthy cause. I hope all of you are going to stay happy, stay healthy, and stay proud to the best of your ability. And above all else, keep on being kind. I'll see you next time.